Hi church family, it's Ari and it's a blessing to be here with you today. Um, before we get into the word, why don't we pray? So Father, I just thank you, Lord, uh, for this time. I pray that you would focus our hearts and our minds on your word, on Christ, your son, Lord. Um, would you just uh, give us uh, more of the knowledge, Lord, of how you formed us, how uh, you desire us to be humble before you, Lord. Um, and we just give you thanks for who you are. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today I wanted to talk about dust. So today my focus uh, is going to be on Psalm 103. And in this whole passage, he's talking about God's great mercy. This is a Psalm of David. He's talking about God's forgiveness, his mercy of us. And in it, he, he speaks a bit, a bit about our identity. So Psalm 103 verse 14 says, For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. And again, this psalm is talking about God's forgiveness towards us. He knows exactly what we are. He knows our hearts, our sin to the full. And yet his forgiveness is complete. And I think it's beautiful that we're called dust. I mean, it's really sweet to my soul and it's humbling it's a blessing to remember the stuff that i am made from you know he made us in his image and from our sin he redeemed us in christ to be his disciples we are the dust of the earth that he has made the sons of god that's amazing and it's this seemingly worthless and ineffective substance on earth that god makes the miracle of life to happen from. And this word dust here uh, in the psalm, from it's translated from the Hebrew word afar, which means, you know, dust, earth, clay. It also translates as ashes or rubbish. So it's just a reminder, you know, of how lowly we are and how, how great God's hand is in our lives, making us uh, his work. And, you know, we have in our culture this uh, love of self and an abundance of self-promotion. And if we ever see, you know, self-hate, we think that the solution is self-love. But both of those things are just two extremes of an obsession with self. You know, we can't hide from or create a new identity for ourselves, no matter how hard we try. Uh, knowing that we have been redeemed by the blood of Christ transforms our thinking and our efforts uh, to be something that we're not. It also seems like remembering that we're dust makes us far more effective in our serving and loving other people. We're removed from the idolatry of pride and of seeking the glory from others. While, rather, we remember that we are the clay that God has taken from the ground and has formed us um, to be. He said it in Genesis when he formed us from the ground. Uh, he set us apart from all creation and said, man was very good. And now we're free from that bondage of self to serve others as more important than ourselves. So remembering that we our dust also stirs up humility and meekness and those two things are very similar and that they both deal with lowliness and I think humility is more about our perspective uh, about ourselves our regard to ourselves and meekness is more about our regard towards others I think C.S. Lewis said it very well when he was talking about humility he says Humility is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. And meekness is our gentleness and our lowliness and our regard towards others. It's not self-promoting. Uh, when we know who we are in Christ, we realize that we don't need to fight for our own identity. Tozer, uh, A.W. Tozer, a theologian and an author of many books, he wrote in his book, The Pursuit of God, the meek man is not a human mouse afflicted with a sense of his own inferiority. Rather, he may be in his moral life as bold as a lion and as strong as Samson, but he has stopped being fooled about himself. He has accepted God's estimate of his own life. 
He knows he is as weak and as helpless as God has declared him to be. But paradoxically, he knows that at the same time, he is in the sight of God of more importance than the angels. In himself, nothing. In God, everything. And that is so profound and such a good work, word on meekness. And I think just at the end, when he's talking about the importance of the more importance than the angels, I think he's talking about um, being set apart. You know, God made us set apart from all creation in his image. And so we see the perfect example of meekness in Christ. It was meekness Christ demonstrated when he left his throne to become of no reputation. And he was born in a humble stable. It was his meekness he expressed when he washed his disciples' feet and when he showed in the Garden of Gethsemane when he said, Not my will, but yours be done, in Luke 22. And in Isaiah 53, 7, it says, He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he he opened not his mouth. And so it's his meekness. In his meekness, we are free from that burden of and the yoke of self-seeking and the ideas of the world. It's in meekness that we find rest, that we find freedom. And we're also free to willingly take the lowest place, you know, modeled after Christ and in his power. We can take the lowest place and we can serve others as more important than ourselves. Amy Carmichael, a missionary in India, she said, if I covet any place on earth but the dust at the foot of the cross, then I know nothing of Calvary love. That is a pretty powerful statement. So again, as we close, he knows exactly what we are, the dust of the earth, and yet he loves us anyway. From even the dust of the earth, he makes marvelous works. In Ephesians 2.10, Paul wrote, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we could walk in them. And that word workmanship, or as some translations it says handiwork, and the Greek word for it is poema, and it's this idea of God's beautiful poem. We are his work of art, his poetry. So in the upside-down world of God, we were created from the dust to become his poetry, his marvelous works. And I just love that. So why don't we pray? Oh, Father, I thank you, God, that you... Uh, you tell us who we are, Lord. We are your children, Lord. We um, we were made in your image, Lord, and, and you've given us a calling, Lord, to, to walk in your works, which you prepared beforehand, Lord. And so, God, I pray for obedience for my brothers and sisters, Lord, to walk also in that, um, in that confidence of who they are in you, Lord but in that obedience, Lord, um, to the works that they were called, Lord, of loving others, uh, loving you first and foremost, Lord, and using the gifts that you have given them, Lord. And so I pray this in the most high name of Jesus. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, I love you, and I will see you soon.